How's it going, everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today, I'm going to review the Mount Trek Shiatsu Foot Massager. And because no one cares about the unboxing experience of these things, I'm just going to open it up right now. Before I begin, I have to thank Mount Trek for providing me this product so I can make these reviews. There you go, it's open. You got the massager itself, you got an instruction booklet a remote control and also a power adapter. I've tried a handful of foot massagers and most modern ones includes a remote control. If you got one that doesn't have a remote control, it's probably a pretty old one. With Most of these have an internal lining because your foot might get a little sweaty in here. It has a heated option and this allows you to unzip the lining, pull it out, go and wash it and then put it back in kind of like a sock. Pretty plain label over here. It does say 30 watts. I kind of had a hard time finding where the plug is. It's like right on the left side here. Power it on. Look, it's lit up a little bit, so I guess that's cool. So the timer is pretty simplistic. It's only 15 minutes and 30 minutes. 15 is red, 30 is blue. Heated option, turn it on and off with the remote. This is actually needing speed not needing strength. And then you have the air compression. So it's low, medium, which is the little air bubbles inside that they inflate. It's getting a little bit too hard, but sometimes it's nice to have it really hard. So you hear that air expel just now. It's like, okay, I pushed hard enough. I'm gonna release the air pressure. Oh yeah, when it squeezes hard, it feels really good. Say, oh, right there, ah, oh, too hard, too hard. It's still going. I, I'm i gonna try to take it, I guess. Ow, ow, ow. It's too hard, I gotta turn it off now. Make it go to low. Let me remove the lining to show you guys what that looks like. It's stuck in here with two pieces of Velcro. You just kind of pull that off. There, and the inside, there's another piece of Velcro. You can see the air bellows kind of constricting. Okay, and then it lets go. When I had my foot in there and the air compression is at its highest, it was pushing the tip of my foot over here a lot and also right at the base of the ankle. I felt like it could push the middle a little bit more. If I'm just pressing it with my hand like this, it's actually not doing that very well, but it does do the front part, it does do the back part and it squeezes the back of your foot very well. Usually with these foot massagers, there's a retaining band here to hold the lining pulled forward towards your toes. So if you let this go, then you can pull the entire thing out. On the top side, you got the two pieces of fabric. You got all these screw holes holding the fabric in place so that it doesn't get pulled out. A little piece of wire that goes to the control panel and a little buzzer I can see right there. There's actually an extra bubble to squeeze the base of your foot where your tendons are. The top over here is just another bellow. You have this rotating element here that touches the ball of your foot. This is for the center of your foot, which I feel like it could come up a little bit higher or maybe there needs to be some kind of adjustment where it can come up higher for people that have higher arches. This little nub over here is higher than this one, but apparently not high enough for me. The base of it over here has a few nubs for the heel and I felt like this was a little bit too hard. So all of this varies a lot just depending on your anatomy. Your foot is gonna be a different shape than mine, so you might have a different experience with this thing. Generally very similar to other foot massagers that I've seen that I'm gonna turn it on. You have this light over here. It's rotating this thing. It's really squeezing your foot. Now it's letting go. Here's the other bellow. It folds over your foot like this. They designed it so that this is kind of clamped together over here. Notice there's this little nub in the center here. It comes up and digs into the ball of your foot every time it rotates through. This is on high speed. I'm gonna turn it on low. You can see it turns much slower. And it looks like there's just only one single motor. It's doing this rotating action for the ball of your foot. It's doing this kneading action in the center and also at the heel of your foot. I'm gonna turn off the heat. Apparently the heat goes along with the light. These lamps is giving off the heat that eventually goes into your foot. So the light is not just an LED light. The light 
is incandescent light heat coming out into your foot. Checking out the power consumption, you can see every once in a while it blips 0.3 watts. Even though this thing is not on at all, I turned it completely off. It's not massaging anything because the remote sensing, it's still on. It has to wake up once in a while to sense the remote. So now let me turn it on. You can see it's consuming uh, 20 watts. Let me turn off the heat. It goes down, wow, it's only like five, six watts. Oh, 10 watts. And then if you turn on the heat, you know, it jumps around, but it's definitely less than 30 watts or so. In terms of foot massaging ability, I'd say it's about 3.8 out of five stars. I'm not too happy about the price point right now because on Amazon, they go for about $130. Now my bar for comparison is a little bit high, which is actual real people foot massage. Like many massagers out there, it works a little bit slow. It eventually does this thing. You just gotta stick your feet in there. It might take a little bit longer, but who cares, right? It's a machine, it can massage you for twice the time, but eventually it will do its job at massaging your feet so that you don't feel sore anymore. Thanks for watching this video. I do have an affiliate link for this product down in the video description below. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.